Hello again, uh, dear friends, dear colleagues uh, in Russia and, and elsewhere. Um, it's a great pleasure for me now to give you uh, at least our cl clinical experience with the top gain FNB needle from Mediglobe. Um, we have been working uh, together with Mediglobe on this needle development and I'm happy to show you some of our thoughts during the development and, and uh, also our clinical uh, results uh, at, pre at present. Um, so, my presentation is about uh, a presentation of the new Sonotip top gain FNB needle. I would like you to also look at some of our benchtop testing results, uh, give you my idea of the US FNB procedure and how to prepare specimens obtained with this type of needle. Uh, looking into our clinical experience with the top gain needle uh, and ending up with when and how to use it. As I told you in a previous uh, in a previous talk, uh, we started uh, very early with developments of prototype uh, needles. Uh, this is one of the, the prototype handles that was uh, produced in 1992 uh, by Mediglobe. Uh, and, and just to highlight that I have been part of this needle development for so many years uh, and I have, I have worked to optimize uh, these procedures uh, in any way possible. We also know that many improvements have been uh, performed also by Mediglobe, ending up with the Sonotip Pro Control uh, needle, uh, FNA needle. But now also the new Mediglobe FNB needle, uh, the top gain, which can be bought now for US as well as for EBIS. When we started this uh, idea of going into the field of FNB, we also looked into uh, different needle types and, and we realized that we had to go towards a crown cut uh, needle. And, and we have good support from the literature today that a crown cut needle clearly is of preference uh, to other needle types. So um, we started out with testings of different uh, needle types, uh, standard needle cuts like FNA needles, facet cuts, two tip crown cut needles, three tip crown cut needles and four tip crown cut needles. It was tested uh, in many ways um, on the bench in the first hand and, and we, we slowly came up with kind of trying to test different angles uh, of cut angles of the needles and finally ended up with a 12 degree, which was the one that took the biggest, biggest bite and uh, also um, the lowest penetration force. This was because it was measured, the puncture force was measured with different uh, types of needles. Um, these are, are some of the 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 the, the, the preparation that uh, was uh, done with different types, different cuts, and so on. We also tested the needles in in uh, soft and hard tissues and looked at 
how big specimens were were taken out. And it, it looks as if a three tip crown cut 12 uh, degree needle would take the biggest. I often wondered why, why does this needle type actually take bigger tissue than than FNA needles. And I think that there is somehow a logical explanation that when you introduce a FNA needle, somehow you push some of the tissue aside, while when you have a crown cut needle, the, you take actually a core uh, in another way. At least this is a way that to me explains why a crown cut needle takes bigger uh, histological cores than an FNA needle. So we have tested the uh, top gain needle in, in, uh, in uh, this series goes with 69 patients. We have uh, some more now, but, but uh, I looked into penetration of the lesion, the visibility of the needle, uh, the difference between gastric duodenal access difference between 22 and 25 gauge uh, FNB needles and then uh, into the histological results. This is a patient with a pancreatic net tumor. As you can see, the needle is here penetrating and I'll show you also uh, without color uh, Doppler that, that the visibility of the needle is quite Good. Um, here you see the visibility of the needle and an exploration with the needle. The tip is clearly shown here um, down in and out of the echopore lesion of the pancreatic head. What it actually showed that we took very good uh, biopsies uh, clearly showing that this was a net tumor. Here you can see some of the uh, some of the new endocrine tumor cells uh, inside uh, a very good specimen. This is a gist tumor in a patient. Uh, the gist tumor is about uh, two centimeter in size. And look again at the needle visibility. Here I. I'm going to penetrate and here you see the needle, very, very good needle visibility. Um, that can't, I think, be better with the tip here and the, the, the part that is uh, highlighted uh, alongside the needle tip. Here you see back and forth movements within the uh, these submucosal gist tumor, which is uh, within the duodenal wall. What it showed, this was a 22 FNB needle, again very, very clearly demonstrating these spindle cells, uh, good histological biopsies. But we also learned that, not surprisingly, that a 22 gauge needle takes bigger bites than a 22, 25 gauge needle. But it is logical. And of course, if you want a big bite, you should uh, increase the needle size. This is a small cell lymphoma, again, very clearly demonstrating uh, uh, lymphoma cells within a very good histological biopsy with a well well preserved um, uh, tissue. So if I should say that what are the indications of EUS FNB, then I would say if you are going to differentiate between two tumors, is this a new endocrine, is this a uh, or is this a cancer uh, metastasis from a renal cancer or lung cancer metastasis? You need more tissue, and I think FNB would is better for that. Submucosal lesion, GIST tumors, no doubt. Lymphomas, new endocrine tumors, 
sarcoidosis, sarcomas, and then where more cellular material is needed for molecular analysis. And in our hands today, pancreatic cancer is one of them. So we always use FNBE when we are talking about pancreatic cancer in case uh, we need uh, more material. If it is just a matter of no cancer or cancer, then FNA is enough. But in my practice, in most cases, we need more tissue and FNB is better. Non-cancer patients, I also think it's, it's mandatory today to do molecular analysis and therefore FNB should be the preferred method. And then, of course, if you need good material for immunohistochemical analysis, then also FNB should be preferred. <laughs> We've made an algorithm for tissue acquisition from pancreatic lesions. And if you follow me, then if you have a pancreatic lesion that is solid and you have no technical dif dif difficulties, uh, take an 22 gauge FNB needle. And that will show you, in most cases, histology. If it is non diagnostic, I would repeat the FNB uh, crown cut uh, needle uh, biopsy. However, if you have a challenging position in the duodenum and you cannot get the needle out and the endoscope is bent, take an FN 25 gauge FNB needle. Either this shows histology, which is diagnostic, or not. And then I think you should either repeat or see whether you can get into another, uh, another position. If it is a cystic lesion, then start with a 22 gauge FNA needle. Take your cytology, take your CEA, and see whether it is uh, diagnostic. If it is not, sorry, if it is not non-diagnostic, consider repeat US FNA with a 19 gauge needle and do an US guided through the needle biopsy, at least in surgical candidates. So how do we do it? We perform this as US FNA, as an outpatient procedure in fastening patients, proper sedation. In our hands, proper sedation is propofol sedation, and we only require lab tests in selected patients. As with US FNA, there are steps that need to be followed. And to you who are used to FNA, this is uh, not very, let's say, uh, interesting, but anyway, each of the steps are important. Outlining the lesion, mounting the needle, positioning of the sheet, introduction of the needle, removing the stylet, and so on, so on. Uh, aspiration of cytological material and discontinuation of suction. We don't do that anymore. So uh, today we, we do either no suction or we do uh, slow retraction of the stylet. This image is to show you that, please, when you do biopsies, hold your fingers like this. Your, this finger shouldn't go onto the top of the, the air button. Uh, I keep on saying this to my visitors who are wanting to learn the, uh, the procedures. Again, adjust the depth of the needle penetration either with the elevator or with the big wheel or a combination of this. If you, if you turn the big wheel um, backwards, you lift the lesion up, making the needle penetration more direct. And you can combine these, this uh, elevator type with the adjustment with the big wheel, getting very, very deep into a lesion. 
Fanning technique, we also try to use that. Full needle monitoring, fanning technique. Now you can see this is performed actually with the big wheel. Can you see how I fan through this small lymph node using both the big wheel as well as the elevator? Going into different parts of the lymph node. The difference between USFNA and USFNA-B when you penetrate a lesion is that you very often need to do the penetration with the F and B needle with a stacking technique because it is harder to penetrate with an F and B needle that, than with an F and A needle, which is very often very slow and soft, soft, soft uh, smoothly going into the lesion. But this is not what uh, an F and B needle um, does. So um, I think I will uh, skip that one. Again, you have to see the needle tip inside moving. This is an insufficient biopsy. You won't get any tissue here. You're only moving this uh, lymph node back and forth. The needle tip is not really penetrating the lesion. The needle has to go inside and go in and out along the lesion. Here you see uh, how the stepping, uh, what I mean by stepping. You see the needle now is, is actually not really penetrating right now, but now I, like a step, introduce the needle into the needle tip into the lesion. Now you can see how it's actually a lot of force has to has to uh, be used in order to move the needle tip. See how the stabbing technique is like a punchful, forceful punch that needs to be done. Again, a forceful punch to get the needle passing through here. It was a little further down, but see how I use the punch force to get in and out the lesion. This is actually a quite rare lesion of one centimeter in the head of the pancreas in a 40 year old male, uh, which is now scheduled for Whipple procedure. It was a new endocrine tumor, but a very rare minin mixed neoplasm combined new endocrine and non new endocrine adenocarcinoma of one centimeter. Um, so whenever you start with USFNA and USFNBB, choose the lesions that are most easy in the beginning and then go on to more difficult cases. To me, the most difficult are submucosal tumors in the stomach wall because they move a lot are difficult to to keep in focus. Pancreatic head tumors are not, all of them are not very easy. I think they are pretty difficult. Peripancreatic lymph nodes, pancreatic body, tail and tumors. So it goes, it becomes more and more easy. Adrenals, liver lesion, mediastinal tumors, large mediastinal tumors. So start with this end and, and move yourself upwards. This is our pathologist. Um, this is our pathologist uh, sitting at his uh, working bench. Uh, Anas uh, is his name. Anas Toxware. Uh, he's a very good pathologist, and you need a good pathologist. Just to show you the difference between cytology and histology, uh, you can see this is smear cytology. And you got a lot of a lot of slides with a disorganized um, uh, specimen and showing only uh, small tissue uh, samples and uh, cells uh, versus histology, where you have cut 
the sample uh, and where you can go into uh, structures, morphology analysis of the samples. So in our practice, we started with cytology smearing on glass slides, air dried preparations and stained in pathology lab. Uh, then we went on to specimen uh, sending this in saline uh, and at the pathology lab, they would centrifuge to a pellet and smear it onto the uh, glass slide. And then we tried specimen in cytolite, a material for preparation, which was centrifuged to a pellet and preserved in formalin in the pathology lab and, and then cut till now where we only preserve it in formalin from this very start and then it is prepared in, in the pathology lab. This is uh, one of our uh, senior uh, doctors doing uh, her US uh, FNB sample, which is now uh, put into uh, this, uh, this um, container and in a closed sealed up uh, container uh, formalin is uh, retracted from this uh, container here. And then it's sent to our pathology lab. Uh, and what they are do, they are filtering our specimen uh, into a box and further fixation in formalin for at least 12 hours. And then there is a liquid paraffin added to the specimen and when solidified slices are cut with the microtome and you saw the the how the specimen looked at the uh, uh, on the slides so this is stained as you can see here but and as also unstained uh, preparations but again here the specimen that was stained showing i IMP3 staining compatible with a pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma in a good uh, histological core. So uh, I, I would like to show you an example of, of this. Um, it's an FNB case of a pancreatic tumor that was also uh, shown during a live uh, case. The patient was 70 year old male. He had a testicular cancer in 1982, squamous cell carcinoma of the oral cavity in 17, malignant cutaneous melanoma in 2020, right and left sided lung ca cancer, lobectomies performed in 2020, and now a suspicion lesion in the head of the pancreas. We already had performed in October an US FNA demonstrating, uh, demonstrating uh, suspicious cells, but not confirmative malignant. So uh, this was the tumor. You can see the tumor here, the tumor measuring about 2.8 uh, centimeters. And uh, I, this was the tumor shown. The, the transducer is in the duodenum now, and you see uh, the echopore lesion here clearly shown. Uh, the common bile duct shown there. Uh, at least this is a highly suspicious uh, lesion. And now we do US FNB. The sheet and the needle is coming here. Again, I think you will notice that we are uh, doing this stabbing technique when introducing the needle. Now, the needle has, the, the lesion has to be in focus to get the right. And now the needle is coming in, not that much stabbing, but let's see what we are doing now. 
see how it's shown that the force is enough to at least to push the leash lesion away in order to uh, penetrate uh, with the needle. A forceful, forceful penetration. So, US guided F and B with the top gain needle clearly now got uh, good material out, and uh, primary pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma was shown in uh, as can be seen in this slide with the numerous uh, cells uh, representing uh, represented in this uh, specimen. What is that? Ugh. What is that? That is different. That's a different. That's that's the lesion. Yeah, yeah. This was uh, uh, actually a video demonstrating of a very difficult lesion to uh, see, lesion. only I one centimeter in the retroperitoneum. I did this together with uh, Julio from uh, Santiago de Compostela. Yes. And the lesion is what size is that? That is. Let me tell you because it's uh, not very good looking one centimeter lesion. Yeah, and for sure not part of the um, adrenal. No. So it might be a metastatic. So I think uh, this is an indication. But let's uh, do a biopsy of that. Yes, I uh, absolutely agree. Let me take out the contrast. Now we have the lesion there. Let's. And we can it. enlarge the image a little. Okay. Like that. Okay. Let's do use the Dobra. There is no problem. So, what needle do you want? Yeah, um, I, I, I would say it would be nice to have an F and B needle. For okay. This. And uh, I'll um, let me use one of the new uh, uh, needles from from Mediglobe, okay. which is a you want top, top, gain, top gain, which is a Francine front cut um, needle, uh, and and. Um, so even what we can do, since we can do a couple of passes, just to show, yeah. uh, we can use the Mediglobe initially, and then if you go for a second pass, we can use the Acquire, for instance. Absolutely. Absolutely. You agree? Yeah, I agree. So this is the new... Oh. Yeah, you have to take it out. Okay, this has the this distal part that you designed. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. since we're using the, the slim scope, the only thing that we need to do is just to put a little bit of jelly. Excuse me, Peter. Yeah. A little bit of gel to make it easier. Okay. So you will see that so now. So this, this is the slim scope. Yes. I have. And okay. it, it's going to go perfect. Let's see. No problem. Give you. Okay. If you want. Uh, I think I managed. Okay. Let's see. I'm, I'm not used to the slim scope here. I have mainly uh, therapeutic endoscopes. But um, you're going to see there is not going to be a big difference. And no. the good thing of this design of the tip of the needle is that gives you more strength and more uh, a stable position when, I, when you're going to make an FMB. So, first the sheet. Yeah, it, it, it goes. It okay. goes out. That's fine. Okay. So, okay. I'm going to prepare in a minute the. Because we all prepare this stuff with, uh, for. with the cytological solutions. So, um, taking the stylet a little back and then the needle, you can see it here, coming out and it looks as if it takes the sheet with it, so which sometimes can be a problem in a slim endoscope that you take the sheet with you while introducing and uh, that that's in some cases better to better to um, Let's see. Better to have a. Um, uh, let's see. To have a needle without this extended uh, sheath. Okay. And it seems you are. I must be. Yeah. yeah. Now I know. You are perfectly I'm inside. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So now I'm going to retrieve. Yes. Uh, aspiration, slow pull, what is what's your prefer? Nothing, it doesn't mm. matter. <laughs> Usually yeah, I aspirate first and if there's a lot of blood I do without aspiration. Okay. This is 
what I tend to do. Okay. So uh, let make sure that I'm I'm inside the lesion. I'm I, I, I'm not sure whether. Yes, now you're inside. Now I'm inside. But the tip is a little difficult to see okay. right now. This is a little difficult to see with the tip. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason that it is a little difficult to see you this too. Yeah. Uh, structures is that the sheet is uh, is um, brought with it out there. Okay. okay, but now you are going to and fro. So. Okay. Yeah. So try to take a little, little bit of uh, fanning technique. Yeah, a little bit of fanning. Okay. So I think. Let's see what it brings. Okay. So okay. Stop. Yeah. Usually, I also take this off because okay. the, the okay. there's still a negative pressure okay. Okay. when you just so take it like that and then. Okay. So lock it and okay. take it off. Take it and we will see what we get. Yeah. So let's okay. see what we okay. No, not a fault. No need to turn on the light. So we are going to use the stylet to retrieve the sample. You can just tell me how it looks. Until now, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but we have the, the everything. Okay. Wow, Peter, unbelievable. Okay. Look. Just to show, I'm going to show first the audience, and I will let uh, Peter take a look afterwards. You can see the sample. I'm waiting for the camera of the approval. So. Um this was to show you that it was really a difficult uh, lesion to, to, to visualize and uh, also to puncture. Um, but coming to my conclusions, I think you might say that USFNA is a powerful tool with high diagnostic yield, a sensitivity in the differentiation between non-malignant and malignant lesions around 90%. US f &B with the crown cut needle design shows promising results and seems to harvest more tissue compared to US f &A and side beveled f &B needle designs. If the clinical question is whether a lesion is a malignant or a no malignant lesion, US f &A is sufficient. If histology for immunohistochemistry or molecular diagnostic is warranted, then I think you should prefer an F and B needle and at least a crown cut needle. And for that, the top gain is, is, is uh, absolutely very, very good. Our clinical experience with the new top gain, I think is, is really promising. We need more data to study, study whether the top gain F and B needle is preferred over a standard F and A needle for DNA profiling in a new era of personalized medicine. Right now, we have uh, an ongoing multicenter study, uh, which will clearly show whether this is uh, the way we should uh, head to uh, do F and B uh, in order to visualize or uh, demonstrate uh, the, the uh, uh, molecular profile better. 
So thank you so much for your attention. It has been a pleasure to show you uh, our results with this new uh, Mediglobe uh, top game F&B needle.